Texas. You guys fired up for Pickle today? You guys fired up for early voting on Monday? How about you now? Early voting, and then we spend all the rest of the time getting friends and family to get out there and vote, right? Now, Nick, you're from Texas, right? I'm from San Antonio. Place that knows what picante sauce should taste like. <laughs> and I, I'm born and raised there, fourth generation. We didn't cross the border, the border crossed us. And this is, this is my love. I may make my home other places, but this is the place I always come back to and the rest of my family is here. And that's the reason that we're here today, is because the love that I have for this state, the love that I have for this country, and now the love that this man is up here to talk to you all about. I think the time has come and we're so fractured in this country that there are people in my own family that don't agree with me being here talking to you guys today. And it's gotten to the point where the jokes, the rhetoric has fractured us. It's fractured us as a family, it's fractured us as a country, it's fractured us in the focus and what we're going for. And that's what's different about this man. You're right, they're wrong, it's just about love. It's about love, it's about understanding, and it's about compassion and empathy. And realizing that people may not have the same views as us, but we have to create a country that we can all be proud of, that we think are inclusive, and that starts with equality. Across the board. And I've come to a point in my life that I think that grace is a little insufficient for handling injustice. The time has come where we don't turn the other cheek, but where we open our heart and try to make people understand where you're coming from. This isn't the time to yell back and forth, but to open up one's heart, listen to what the concerns are, so we're not blind to them, and we don't have something happen like happened with this last presidency. Yeah, listen, I, I came down here to see what all the fuss was about. <laughs> it's about you, Mark, it's about you. You may think this is just about Texas, and it is, it's very important, but we, the whole nation's watching you. We really are. So no pressure. No pressure. Um, you know, I got ready to go on this trip to come out here, and my 15-year-old son, Joaquin, who uh, hasn't formed his political views, and those are his words. You know, and I, and, I, and I respect that, and I don't blame him for what he's been seeing for the past couple years. He said, Dad, why are you going to Texas? I said, well, look, that's a really good question. I said, I, you know, with, with, I'm tired of listening to my country in this, this two-year shouting match where the, the vitriol and the hate, it's been, it's been, it's been like a, a race to the bottom, a fast race, a ceaseless race to the bottom. And I don't know but I, if the rest of the country is like this as well, but we've been waiting for that one voice. And we've been waiting for that one voice, that clear, that clear voice of unity, of unity that's going to unite us, that goes across party lines. And, and I heard his voice. I heard Beto's voice. And, and, it's, and it's also the, the thing that I heard that, that I'm, I'm most inspired with is that he talks about dealing with this fear that we're all, talk, we're all taught to fear. Fear divides us, it paralyzes us, it separates us, it keeps us from voting. So we're, we're not going to worry about that fear. We're going we're gonna to lead with love and with intelligence and with courage because that's what this is. So what are we going to do? What are we going to do? What, what are we, what are we going to do? And we're gonna vote. And I know, like Nick said, it, 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 this, this has divided families, it's divided friends. I know you know of a friend, of a family member, of a tío, of a primo, an uncle or an aunt that's, that's planning on sitting on the sidelines and not getting involved in this, in this race. And thinking that, they're matter, that their vote doesn't matter. That they're like, we're, why, why, why should I vote? I need you guys to go out and find that one person, to find out that, that, that those two people, and bring them, to the, bring them to the polls. Get them involved, tell them that their vote is sacred. It's sacred. They don't want us to vote. And there are tools out there for you. You know, there's a Voter Pal app, there's numerous other apps where you can get your friends together and realize that, you know, every one of you should have 20 people that you hold to that, to account and say they are gonna make it to the polls. 
This is going to be one of the closest races we have ever seen. And it's because a lot of you, even that support, don't follow through with the vote. And that's what's most important. And we got to get the other people in our families and our peer groups to do the same. That's right. Yeah, the, the, margin, the margin of victory could be razor thin. It could come down to the people in here and the multiplying effect that you have with your friends and family. That, that, to inspire them, to empower them, to take action. This is an important vote, not just for, this, not just for the state of Texas, the whole country's watching you. Yes. So now vote. Before Mark starts to put forth his platform, because I think he's gonna be running soon too, <laughs> with a smile like that, we don't want to take away any more from the man of the hour. That's right. <laughs> when I say bet, you say eto. Bet! Thank you so much for being here today, guys, and thank you for inviting us and allowing us to be here.